Now, if we look at traditional astrology, we and we've done the shift from this earth sign into this air sign, we've officially entered in the beginning of this cycle, 20-year cycle, within a 200-year cycle, within an 800-year cycle, into the age of Aquarius. Now, the age of Aquarius energy is really interesting because we're leaving an earth, earth sign and we're entering an air sign. And an air sign, the age of Aquarius, the energy of age of Aquarius, or the, the uh, energy of Aquarius is very progressive. It's forward thinking energy. It's a we energy versus an I energy, right? It's the, it's the mentality of visionary. It has rebelliousness in it, right? There's a maverick energy to the Aquarian, Aquarian energy. It's innovative. It's eccentric, very eccentric in some cases. It, focus on, it potentially focuses more on humanitarian pursuits and valuing each other in, each under individually and holding respect for that and taking care of things as a unit but it's also about disrupting systems that don't support the old way, the new way of thinking. So when we look at this energy, you know, oftentimes people think, oh, the age of Aquarius, like that song from the 60s, you know, everyone thinks it's this idyllic, anything goes, peace-loving Parisian state. Well, that's an ideal projection onto the uh, an understanding of Aquarius. Aquarius just has the ability to be this eccentric, innovative, rebellious, visionary energy, but it can be viewed from both sides and it can be you can you can look at that from a dysfunctional way and you can look at that from a from a very healthy, engaged way. So, whatever happens in this age, there is we're at the beginning of this cycle. So we're in the process of really moving into it. So as a result of that, there's going to be a major shift in the power dynamics. I mean, this is just what the energy states. And for eons, the power has been resting in more traditional grounded earth values, oppressive hierarchies, based those kind of structures, right? And the beliefs have been dictating that the reality. And that's been the influence of an air sign and particularly a Capricorn air sign. So... In the age of Aquarius, the power turns. There's a shift in, a, in an eccentric shift in the energy, and it shifts into a very different way of thinking, a more abstract way of thinking, and it gives a lot more freedom to kind of open up different ideas to choose a reality that aligns more to something else that's abstract. So air signs are really abstract. They're not... Air signs are not are not um, pragmatic in the sense of like an earth sign is very grounded. It's a real tangible thing. And it's, there's a lot of ideas in an air sign. So what can we expect from this cycle? Beginning and entering into this new cycle, what are the things we can see? Like you'll see for sure economic disruption. There's going to be some kind of disruption in the present systems of economy. There kind of has to be. That's just the way Aquarius works. And so there has to, literally, if you're going to build a new vision of something more abstract or something different, something more eccentric, something more uh, visionary, you have to break down the old and dismantle the, the existing system. So we are going to see the disruption of systems. That's, we've already seen the beginning of that at the end of the year and, and, and through the course of 2020, we saw the kind of the stripping away of all the belief systems of what people held and the, the attachment to the old regime to a certain degree. And ironically, that aligns to the, the, you know, the re-election process in the United States for this year. So we're going to see dismantling and we're going to see some breaking down and we're going to see re rebuilding. There's a lot of humanitarian oriented things because Aquarius is really has a humanitarian aspect to it. Even though it's individual, there's an individualism in it. It doesn't um, completely abandon the idea of, of us, we. It, it's, more, it's more humanitarian oriented. Now, humanitarian oriented is a catchphrase. So humanitarian oriented also means social activism. Now, that doesn't mean social activism is going to be expansive. It just means there is social activism, eccentric, strange, visionary activism. Now, you can take that and extrapolate that could be in a contractive way and that could be in an expansive way, depending on how you look at it. So if you look at the energy of that, the energy of hum the, the social activism, you can see that that can play out in many different ways, which could potentially create a lot of polarity as people align to different value systems. So... The energy of that is going to be, that's going to be a very interesting thing that kind of continues to unravel. And it has a huge amount of effect. 
that energy of of social activism will have a huge effect on the energy moving forward into this new phase, right? Into this new cycle, this new paradigm. So the other thing is, is that Aquarius is science-minded. It's a science air sign. It's an intellect sign. It's a mind-based sign. So you will see technology, science, abstract concepts and ideas continue to develop. That's going to be part of the energy. That's just the influence of the year. That's not in terms of prediction. That's the kind of influence that we have that we're working within. So we're working within an energy that's really abstract, science-minded, thinking, mental energy, air sign, right? It's also unconventional. Now, I leave unconventional up to you what that means because unconventional does not necessarily mean you like it. It just means it's not with convention. So, you know, the far right is unconventional, the far left is unconventional. So, it doesn't say it's going to be unconventional in an expansive way. It just says the influence has an unconventional side to it. So, abstract thinking I talked about, mental energy, and then this idea of individual freedom within the whole. So, it doesn't give up individual freedom within the whole. There's part of that there. So like I said before, the age of Aquarius does not mean an idyllic, anything goes, peace-loving paradise of unicorn and rainbows. It just means we have this influence and it depends on your relationship to this influence and how you choose to engage with it that's going to establish what happens. But you have to also remember we're entering into the cycle. So we are not full blown at the end of a 200 year cycle. We are at the beginning of everything. So in the beginning of any cycle, there's always going to be, in terms of transition, there's going to be disruption. It's, it's in the nature of moving from one paradigm to another, from crossing an atmosphere, from pushing through the atmosphere of Earth into space. There's always a disruptive nature. So we are already experiencing and feeling in the beginning of January this insane disruptive nature as one paradigm shifts, as one thing shifts into another, right? So you have to expect it's not just magically going to shift into something new, there's always going to be an attachment to the old regime when things have to rebuild themselves and there's sort of dismantling, deconstruction, unraveling, um, this, the whole idea of this kind of tension is part of the process as we push into a new paradigm. So since we're just at the beginning of that, we're going to experience for at least the first three to four months, severe amounts of tension as we push into something new, right? And I mean, you can see that happening in the political sphere, in the social sphere. You can see the potential and the hope of things coming in, the, in society with vaccines and possibilities, right? For, for moving out of the kind of the stalemate that we've been in, the lockdown, the energetic lockdown we've been in for 2020. But you can also see the tension that's happening as a result of that shift because the old regime and the old paradigm doesn't want to give itself up very easily. So that's just the nature of, that's the nature of shifting and changing into something new. So on, because of that, Aquarian energy can be really heated because it's big picture issues, but people will dig their heels into the belief systems they have as things continue to unravel. You know, remember we're at the beginning of a cycle. So we're going to experience this tension as we move from one paradigm to another. It's always the case when you're rebirthing into a new state there's always going to be things you have to let go of you have to change you have to shift you have to organize you have to reevaluate but i'll tell you one thing that is very apparent about this age about this energy that we're in and about this new year that there's going to be significant amounts of conscious learning and growth as individuals around us learn how to contribute and affect, for better or for worse, what the world looks like. So it's a very learning space. And so in some ways it's kind of, it's very new. We haven't been in it for a long time, 200 years. So this cycle is starting something incredibly innovative and strange and new, and everybody has their reactions to something new coming out, right? Now, so how does that apply to you as, per, as, as an individual? 
in this world, like as things happen. So the you know the best way to think about Aquarian energy is this opportunity for a completely new new unconventional way of looking at your life, your business, your spiritual practices. There's got to be innovation to a degree. You have to innovate the way you've been thinking into something different because you're going to have to shift gears from thinking in terms of very grounded earth way to thinking into in an air way. So there's going to be more abstract concepts. So I would assume that the that anything oriented towards the abstract technology, um, a lot of things that have to do with with different ways of learning, different ways of approaching work, that's all going to become more stabilized, right? It's interesting because if you think about it, over the last year, many people have determined they don't have to go into the office in order to be productive. They don't have to leave their home in order to go to work in order to prove that they can do their job. So in that sense, that's a very good example of how many people are going to now say, I want to go back to the same grind of getting into traffic, driving to a work and having a nine to five job in a cubicle when I could be doing exactly the same job at home, right? For those of us or those of you who've traveled to your different potential job situations. So if you think about it, there's an abstract way that companies have to look at the way they're going to reorganize their staff, the people who are working and how they engage with work how they engage with the way they, they learn, the way that they become productive. For those of us working at home, who are already working at home, it'll also force us to shift the way we think about it. So social media, online stuff, uh, Zoom, t all the Zoom activities, all of that's here to stay. It's just a matter of how we're going to integrate that into the new way of thinking. But it's not going away. So a lot of people I heard, I can't, get, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. I just want to end this year. And I want to finally start off in this new year and, and just like, I'm just looking for January 1st so we can just be done with it. But the truth is we're not really done with it. We have at least three to five to six months of really now adjusting to the new, the new shift. So there is a transition period that's always required when you shift one paradigm from another paradigm. And that transition is not always pleasant. Now, since this has been going on for a 200-year cycle, we're at the end of 200 years, people are very attached to the old way of being. So the transition is not going to be necessarily a smooth one, right? Now, we are seeing the complete reflection of that in the political situation. There has never been anything like this in terms of the transition or lack of smooth transition that we've ever seen between presidents. So that's an example of the old paradigm holding on as the new paradigm is pushing. Now, since the energy is moving into that direction of the new paradigm, it's inevitable that the shift is going to happen, but it doesn't necessarily mean the shift has to happen cleanly, easily, without tension. So you have to expect this. Now, if we're expecting that in the social world, in our larger context, in the cosmology, we're also expecting, you have to also expect that to a degree in your personal life. You have to be willing to be receptive to this shift that's being presented, this new energy that's being presented to you if you want to really, really lean into it and accept the fact that things are going to be different. All right? So it's going to be disruptive. It's going to be unconventional. There's a level of rebelliousness around it. There's innovation, it's going to be eccentric, it's going to be visionary, but it's going to happen. It's inevitable. The energy presented that we're all living in is leaning us in that direction. That's the influence. So you have the option as individuals to fight that influence and continue to stay in the same state or lean into that influence and become more fluid in your ability to think outside the box because you're going to need to. Now, some people would say, listen, I had to think a lot outside the box in order to make 2020 work. But the thing is, you were do most people were doing that in order to sustain their, exp their space in 2020. This is something different. This is not about sustaining what was. This is about being open as a, as a pivot and shift to something new. 
It's inevitable. It's happening. It's not something, it's not an idea or a concept. This is an energy that's present. This is the stars, the cosmology. This is the, the archetypal energy that we're dealing with. We're dealing with this shift. It's actually really, really exciting, but not necessarily comfortable. So I want to dissuade anyone from thinking that, you know, the psychedelic colors come up from the earth and that the Age of Aquarius song pops on and that everybody is waving around like, you know, with the peace signs thinking that it's all just going to be harmonious because that is the process of what Aquarius is, is aiming for, but it's not the starting point of a cycle. It takes a while to get to a level of sustained ability. Now, if you look at the energy of that ox and that yin energy and that metal, you can see that it's a slow moving process to get to that. So it's a feminine influence too. Aquarius has a feminine influence. So it's gonna, there's some inevitability that the patriarchal systems will start to dismantle, but not right away. It's gonna take some time. That's what the energy says, okay? So we're entering into this new age at the, like at the beginning of every cycle, it's important to reevaluate, to look at what worked and to look at what didn't work and to assess your situation and to recalibrate based on an energy that's being presented, right? A lot of people looked at their lifestyle and asked themselves if that lifestyle was really supportive and sustainable. They looked at the way they viewed money and asked themselves if they had a, a good relationship to a sustainable relationship with finances. Those people who were living on credit and who were living hand to mouth were deeply affected by the trauma of 2020. So it's gonna ask you to reevaluate the way you think about everything. You know, and that that's why in the rest of this discussion, I want to talk about some very specific qualities that came around questions um, that will help us think about how we're going to think about and deal with and look at what this new energy presents to us. So entering into this new age, into this visionary energy, not necessarily an easy transition, but it's going to happen. And we're at the beginning of it, so we have to have patience. It doesn't happen just like that. It's like anything, it's a process of evolution. There has to be a letting go of what's old, a reevaluation, but you have to think differently. You're not gonna be able to think the same way. This is not just about sustaining the way you were before. You can't actually go back to the way you were before. In fact, I would challenge anyone on the call or anyone to ask themselves, given the situation with COVID over the last year, can you really go back to the way you were before, right? All the things that happened, all the things that you've seen in people around you, all the things that you had to reevaluate, the way you had to reevaluate your work, your relationship to your family, your relationship to yourself, your relationship to your process. Can you really go back and just status quo? Aquarius says no, not possible. And that's good because that inevitably means either by hook or crook, you're going to be pushed or dragged into the new paradigm, or you're going to lean into it, knowing that the energies that are present for you. So unconventional thinking is going to be key. Thinking is key word too. It's going to be abstract, unconventional ways of approaching problems. And they're going to be differently approached. Now, Aquarius is a we energy. Meaning it's, and we're looking at the transition from I to we, because there is a social humanitarian, visionary, encompassing humanitarianism to the energy. So that's present too. Now, how that plays out in terms of social activism will be very interesting to see, but the energy is present. So that's what we're dealing with in terms of the vibration the influence, the opportunity, the invitation from the universe for the next year and for the next 20 years and for the next 200 years and for the next 800 years. So if you think about this as an 800 year cycle, we're at the very beginning, right? But the potential of that energy exists for everybody all the time. It's, it's engaged there. So my invitation to you is take in the way you've been thinking about stuff and the way you've been approaching it may not work in the coming year. Not the same way. You're going to have to change it. I don't care how you have done it, you're gonna to have to reconfigure it. If you wanna lean into an abstract air, unconventional, eccentric Aquarius, 
you're going to have to think differently. Creatively, visionary, it's not necessarily pragmatic in the way you think. It's going to, it's going to ask you to engage a different kind of, of logic, a heart-based logic, not necessarily always pragmatic. Okay? So, you, so the interesting thing is about Aquarius, it's not a pragmatic energy, it's a visionary energy. So as a result of that, if you're looking for A plus B equals C, mm, that might be a difficult thing for you in this year. So you're going to have to be more fluid. So age of Aquarius comes in, we're shifting tides. So what are we shifting? What's the present state of the energy and what we're shifting into? And so I want to address that because I had some really interesting questions come up that were powerful and pertaining to different kinds of qualities that I, I, I think it's important to address to understand the context of what we're moving into. That's the energy influence. That's the elemental influence that we're moving into. Now, what are the dynamics, the human dynamics of what we're seeing around us that we're, that's what we're, the, what's the context of those human dynamics that we're dealing with?